the U.S. state of West Virginia was formed out of Western Virginia and added to the Union as a direct result of the American Civil War. In the summer of 1861, Union troops under General George McClellan drove off Confederate troops under General Robert E. Lee. This essentially freed Unionists in the northwestern counties of Virginia to form their own government as a result of the Wheeling Convention. After Lee's departure, Western Virginia continued to be a target of Confederate raids, even after the creation of the new state in 1863. These actions focused both on supplying the Confederate Army with provisions as well as attacking the vital Baltimore and Ohio Railroad that linked the Northeast with the Midwest. As exemplified in the Jones and Bowdoin raid, guerrilla warfare also gripped the new state, especially in the Allegheny Mountain counties to the east where loyalties were much more divided than in the Unionist northwest part of the state. History Political events On 17 April 1861, the state convention in Richmond declared secession. Nearly all delegates from counties west of the Allegheny Mountains voted against secession, and most people and officials in that area refused any directions from the secessionist state government. On 15 May, Western Virginia Unionists convened the first session of the Wheeling Convention. Many of the delegates were informally or self-appointed, so the convention only denounced secession and called for formal election of delegates. The elected delegates met in the second session on the 11th of June. On the 20th of June the convention declared that by acceding to secession, the officials of the state government in Richmond had forfeited their offices, which were now vacant. The convention then elected replacements for these state offices, creating the restored government of Virginia. The restored government was generally supported in areas where secession was opposed. Union troops also held the three northernmost counties in the Shenandoah Valley, and despite the pro-secession views of most residents, these counties were also subjected to the restored government. At the Wheeling Convention, some delegates proposed the immediate establishment of a separate state. However, other delegates pointed out that the creation of a new state would require the consent of Virginia, under Article 4 of the Constitution. Thus it was necessary to establish the restored government of Virginia to give that consent, which was granted 20 August 1861. A referendum in October 1861 approved statehood, a constitutional convention met, and its work was approved by referendum in April 1862. Congress approved statehood that December, with the condition that slavery must be abolished in the new state. This condition required a new constitutional convention and referendum. The revised constitution provided for the future abolition of slavery, which took effect on 3 February 1865. On 20 June 1863, the newly proclaimed state of West Virginia was admitted to the Union, including all the western counties and the lower Shenandoah panhandle. All the northern states had free public school systems before the war, but not the border states. West Virginia set up its system in 1863. Over bitter opposition it established an almost equal education for black children, most of whom were ex-slaves. When Union troops occupied parts of eastern Virginia such as Alexandria and Norfolk, these areas came under the jurisdiction of the restored government. They were not included in West Virginia. With West Virginia statehood, the restored government relocated to Alexandria. Military events In April 1861, Virginia troops under Thomas J. Stonewall Jackson occupied Harper's Ferry and part of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad leading into western Virginia. They seized many B&O locomotives and rail cars on 23 May. In May and June 1861, Confederate forces advanced into western Virginia to impose control by the Richmond government and the Confederacy. They got no further than Philippi, due to bad roads and no local support. Then Union troops under McClellan drove them back in July. There was additional campaigning further south where Greenbrier County was pro-Confederate. 
enabling Confederate troops to enter Nicholas County to the west. In September 1861, Union troops drove the Confederates out of Nicholas County and defeated their counterattack at Sheet Mountain. Thereafter all of the Trans-Allegheny region was under firm Union control except for some of the easternmost counties. Greenbrier County was occupied in May 1862. Pro-Confederate guerrillas burned and plundered in some sections, and were not entirely suppressed until after the war was ended. There were two minor Confederate expeditions against the northeastern corner of the West later on. Jackson's Romney expedition in January 1862, and the Jones and Bowdoin raid in May-June 1863. Union strategy for the region was to protect the vital B&O Railroad and also attack eastward into the Shenandoah Valley and southwestern Virginia. This latter goal proved impossible, due to the poor roads across mountainous terrain. The B&O passed across the lower end of the Shenandoah, east of the Alleghenies. This area was therefore occupied by Union troops for nearly all of the war, and was a scene of frequent combat. Harper's Ferry was the site of a major U.S. Army arsenal, and was taken by Confederates in the opening days of the war, and again during the Maryland Campaign of 1862. During the Maryland Campaign it was a route of invasion and retreat for the Army of Northern Virginia. The campaign concluded there with the Battle of Shepherdstown. Many soldiers from West Virginia served on both sides in the war. Those in Confederate service were in Virginia regiments. Those in Union service were in West Virginia regiments. Among these were the 7th West Virginia Infantry, famed for actions at Antietam and Gettysburg, and the 3rd West Virginia Cavalry, which also fought at Gettysburg. On the Confederate side, Albert G. Jenkins, a former U.S. Representative recruited a brigade of cavalry in Western Virginia, which he led until his death in May 1864. Other Western Virginians served under Brig. Gen. John and Bowden and in the Stonewall Brigade under Brig. Gen. James A. Walker. Guerrilla War. On May 28, 1861 one of the first trials of the Civil War for sabotage took place in Parkersburg, Virginia. A group of men were found playing cards under a B&O railroad bridge and arrested by federal authorities. The trial was conducted by Judge William Lother Jackson. The men were acquitted, since no actual crime had taken place, but Parkersburg was split over the verdict, and Judge Jackson left to join Carl Porterfield at Philippi. With the defeat of Confederate forces at the Battle of Philippi and the Battle of Cheap Mountain only occasionally would they occupy parts of western Virginia. Local supporters of Richmond were left to their own devices. Many guerrilla units originated in the pre-war militia, and these were designated Virginia State Rangers and starting in June, 1862. These were incorporated into Virginia State Line regiments. By March 1863, however, many were enlisted in the regular Confederate Army. There were others though who operated without sanction of the Richmond government, some fighting on behalf of the Confederacy while others were nothing more than bandits who preyed on Union and Confederate alike. Early in the war captured guerrillas were sent to Camp Chase or Johnson Island in Ohio, Fort Delaware in Delaware and also the Athenaeum in Wheeling. Some were paroled after taking an oath but many returned to their guerrilla activities. The Union authorities began to organize their own guerrilla bands, the most famous of which was the Snake Hunters, headed by Captain Bags. They patrolled Worth and Calhoun counties through the winter of 1861-62 and captured scores of moccasin rangers, which they sent as prisoners to Wheeling. The fight against the rebel guerrillas took a new turn under Gen. John C. Fremont and Col. George Crook, who had spent his pre-war career as an Indian fighter in the Pacific Northwest. Carl Crook took command of the 36th Ohio Infantry, centered around Summersville, Nicholas County. 
He trained them in guerrilla tactics and adopted a no-prisoners policy. On January 1, 1862, Crook led his men on an expedition north to Sutton, Braxton County, where he believed Confederate forces were located. None were found, but his troops encountered heavy guerrilla resistance and responded by burning houses and towns along the line of march. But by August 1862, Unionist efforts were severely hampered with the withdrawal of troops to eastern Virginia. In this vacuum Gen. William W. Loring, CSA, recaptured the Kanawha Valley, Gen. Albert Gallatin Jenkins, CSA, moved his forces through central West Virginia, capturing many supplies and prisoners. Confederate recruitment increased, Gen. Loring opening recruitment offices as far north as Ripley. In response to rebel raids, Gen. Robert H. Milroy issued a command demanding reparations to be paid in cash and proceeded to assess fines against Tucker County citizens, guilty or not, and threatened them with the gallows or house burning. Jefferson, Davis and Confederate authorities lodged formal complaints with Gen. Henry Wager Halleck in Washington, who censured Gen. Milroy. However, Milroy argued in defense of his policy and was allowed to proceed. By early 1863 Union efforts in West Virginia were going badly. Unionists were losing confidence in the Wheeling government to protect them, and with the approaching dismemberment of Virginia into two states guerrilla activity increased in an effort to prevent organization of county governments. By 1864 some stability had been achieved in some central counties, but guerrilla activity was never effectively counted. Union forces that were needed elsewhere were tied down in what many soldiers considered a backwater of the war. But federal forces could not afford to ignore any rebel territory, particularly one so close to the Ohio River. As late as January, 1865, Gov. Arthur I. Ballman complained of large-scale guerrilla activity as far north as Harrison and Marion counties. In one last, brazen act of the guerrilla war, McNeil's rangers of Hardy County kidnapped Generals George Crook and Benjamin F. Kelly from behind Union lines and delivered them as prisoners of water Richmond. The Confederate surrender at Appomattox finally brought an end to guerrilla war in West Virginia. Soldiery On May 30, 1861, Brig. Gen. George B. McClellan in Cincinnati wrote to President Lincoln, I am confidently assured that very considerable numbers of volunteers can be raised in Western Virginia. After nearly two months in the field in West Virginia he was less optimistic. He wrote to Gov. Francis Harrison Pierpont of the restored government of Virginia in Wheeling that he and his army were anxious to assist the new government but that eventually they would be needed elsewhere, and that he urged that troops be raised among the population. Before I left Grafton I made requisitions for arms, clothing etc. for 10,000 Virginia troops. I fear that my estimate was much too large. On August 3, 1861, the Wellsburg Herald editorialized, A pretty condition northwestern Virginia is in to establish herself as a separate state. After all the drumming and all the gas about a separate state she has actually organized in the field for not entire regiments of soldiers and one of these hails, almost entirely from the panhandle. Similar difficulties were experienced by Confederate authorities at the beginning of the war. On May 14, 1861, Carl, George A. Porterfield arrived in Grafton to secure volunteers, and reported slow enlistment. Carl, Porterfield's difficulty ultimately, however, was lack of support by the Richmond government, which did not send enough guns, tents and other supplies. He eventually turned away hundreds of volunteers due to lack of equipment. Gen. Henry A. Wise also complained of recruitment in the Kanawha Valley, though he eventually assembled 2,500 infantry, 700 cavalry, three battalions of artillery for a total of 4,000 men which became known as Wise's Legion. One regiment from the Wise Legion, the 3rd Infantry was sent to South Carolina in 1862, and it was from Marge. 
Thomas Brown of the 3rd Infantry that Gen. Robert E. Lee bought his famous horse traveler. In April 1862 the Confederate government instituted a military draft, and nearly a year later the U.S. government did the same. The Confederate draft was not generally effective in West Virginia due to the breakdown of Virginia state government in the western counties and Union occupation of the northern counties, although conscription did occur in the southern counties. In the southern and eastern counties of West Virginia Confederate recruitment continued at least until the beginning of 1865. The Wheeling government asked for an exemption to the federal draft, saying that they had exceeded their quota under previous calls. An exemption was granted for 1864, but in 1865 a new demand was made for troops, which Gov. Borman struggled to fill. In some counties, ex-Confederates suddenly found themselves enrolled in the U.S. Army. The loyalty of some federal troops had been questioned early in the war. The rapid conquest of northern West Virginia had caught a number of southern sympathizers behind Union lines. A series of letters to Gen. Samuels and Gov. Pierpoint in the Department of Archives and History in Charleston, most dated 1862, revealed the concern of Union officers. Carl Harris, 10th Company, March 27, 1862, to Gov. Pierpoint. The election of officers in the Gilmer County Company was a farce. The men elected were rebels and bushwhackers. The election of these men was intended, no doubt, as a burlesque on the reorganization of the militia. There has never been an official count of Confederate service in West Virginia. Early estimates were very low. In 1901 historians Fast and Maxwell placed the figure at about 7,000. An exception to the low estimates is found in Why the Solid South, whose authors believed the Confederate numbers exceeded Union numbers. In subsequent histories the estimates rose, Otis Gay, Rice placed the number at 10,000 minus 12,000, Richard O. Curry in 1964 placed the figure at 15,000, the first detailed study of Confederate soldiery estimates the number at 18,000, which is close to the 18,642 figure stated by the Confederate Department of Western Virginia in 1864. In 1989 a study by James Carter Linger estimated the number at nearly 22,000. The official number of Union soldiers from West Virginia is 31,884 as stated by the Provost Marshal General of the United States. These numbers include, however, re-enlistment figures as well as out-of-state soldiers who enlisted in West Virginia regiments. In 1905 Charles H. Ambler estimated the number of native Union soldiers to be about 20,000. Richard Current estimated native Union numbers at 29,000. In his calculations, however, he only allowed for a deduction of 2,000 out-of-state soldiers in West Virginia regiments. Ohio contributed nearly 5,000, and with the deduction of Pennsylvania and other states volunteers that estimate is reduced considerably. The West Virginia Department of Archives and History believes that Confederate and Union numbers were about equal though they give no specific numbers. The George Tyler Moore Center in Shepherdstown estimates the Union numbers to be 22,000 minus 25,000. George Tyler Moore Center nursing during the Civil War. The Sisters of St. Joseph, who operated Wheeling Hospital in that city, were nurses during the war. They treated soldiers brought to the hospital and prisoners at the Athenaeum in downtown Wheeling. In 1864, the Union Army took control of the hospital, and the sisters went on the federal payroll as matrons and nurses. Beginning that summer, several of them later received pensions in recognition of their service. Civil War Battles in West Virginia The Manassas Campaign Battle of Hoax Run Berkeley County Stonewall Jackson successfully delays a larger Union force The Western Virginia Campaign Battle of Philippi Barber County Union victory propels George McClellan into limelight 
Battle of Laurel Hill, Barber County, Morris routes Confederate troops in five days of skirmishing at Bellington in a diversionary attack as the opening portion of the Battle of Rich Mountain. Battle of Rich Mountain, Randolph County, another McClellan victory propels him to high command. Battle of Corrix Ford, Tucker County, Confederate Brig, Gen. Robert S. Garnett is the first general officer killed in the war. Battle of Kessler's Cross Lanes, Nicholas County, Confederates rout Tyler's Union force. Lee arrives soon after. Battle of Carnifex Ferry, Nicholas County, Rosecrans drives back the Confederates and wins more territory. Battle of Cheap Mountain, Pocahontas County, Lee is beaten and is recalled to Richmond. Battle of Greenbrier River, Pocahontas County, inconclusive fight brings only bloodshed, but no resolution. Battle of Guyandotta, Cabell County Confederate cavalry attacks the town and the small untrained Union force stationed there. In retaliation, much of the town is burned by the Union the next day. Battle of Camp Allegheny, Pocahontas County, Union attack is repulsed and both sides camp for the winter. Later actions Battle of Hancock, Morgan County, Stonewall Jackson's operations against the B&O Railroad. Battle of the Henry Clark House, Mercer County, West Virginia, Stonewall Jackson's Shenandoah Valley Campaign, Cox's actions against Princeton and the Virginia and Tennessee Railroad at Dublin, Virginia. Battle of Princeton Court House, Mercer County. West Virginia, Jackson's Shenandoah Valley Campaign, Cox's actions against the Virginia and Tennessee Railroad at Dublin, Virginia. Battle of Harper's Ferry, Jefferson County, Jackson surrounds the town and forces its garrison to surrender. Battle of White Sulphur Springs, Greenbrier County, West Virginia, Carl, George Patton turns back Avril's raid against the Virginia and Tennessee Railroad. Battle of Charleston, Kenor County, Confederates take Charleston, occupying it for six weeks. Battle of Shepherdstown, Jefferson County, A. P. Hill's counterattack secures Lee's retreat from Sharpsburg. Battle of Bulltown, Braxton County, West Virginia, Union garrison halts against Confederate attack. Battle of Hurricane Creek, Putnam County, skirmish between Union and Confederate forces. Battle of Droop Mountain, Pocahontas County, as a result of the Union victory, Confederate resistance in the state essentially collapsed. Battle of Moorefield, Hardy County, Union cavalry drives off John McCausland's Confederate cavalry. Battle of Summit Point, Jefferson County, inconclusive action during Union Marge, Gen. Philip Sheridan's Shenandoah Valley Campaign. Battle of Smithfield Crossing, Jefferson and Berkeley Counties, inconclusive. Two of Dubal Early's infantry divisions force back a Union cavalry division and are stopped by an infantry counterattack.